So we're back to our discussion of the six components of the rotator cuff. And we've got a case here where it's just lights out. Everything's here. Dogs and cats living together, 10 days of darkness, the plague, mass hysteria, and all the cuff structures are involved. So we start up high in the axial projection, and we see a giant curvilinear crescent or U. That's this right here. In fact, it's so beautiful, I've got to put some colors on it. It's too tempting. There it is, right there. All of those structures should be over here, peripherally on the humeral head. This is a giant hole right here. Of course, everybody forgets to look at the poor axial projection. Let's work our way down. And as we come down, we see a large hole, which means the capsule is ruptured. You've got lots of fluid leaking out anteriorly, so the capsule is torn. And there is our poor caracohumeral ligament, the retracted edge of it, which should have gone all the way over and inserted on the humeral head, the caracohumeral ligament. So the caracohumeral ligament and the capsule are torn. Here's our biceps anchor coming in to the labrum. It forms very often when you can see it with high quality imaging such as this, a V or a Y. We said the biceps can come in anteriorly and plug right into the tip here. Or it can parallel the labrum for a bit anteriorly. Or it can come off in the mid. Or it can come off in the back. There's quite a bit of variability in the takeoff of the biceps labral anchor. So let's keep working our way down. And as we do, we run into the rest of the biceps. Let's follow it with our scroll. Here it is. There it is. There it is. And it never comes back to the proper location ever again. Keep watching it. It always stays perched on the lesser tuberosity. And that's because the fibers that normally keep it in over here, namely the subscapularis fibers, and the transverse humeral ligament, which inserts here, which is formed mostly by the already known torn caracohumeral ligament, is gone. Allowing the biceps to displace into the arms, the loving arms, of the subscapularis. It can go all the way through into the joint. It can stay in the subscapularis. Sometimes it can ride over the top of the subscapularis. Three types of bicep subluxation. But we're talking about the biceps because it is the third component now of the rotator cuff that we've seen that is damaged, torn, or ruptured. Let's keep going, shall we? We're moving on down. Let's pay attention to the subscapularis. Moving on down, moving on up. We are missing the subscapularis fibers right here. At least the deep ones. The superficial ones are intact, but the deeper ones are torn. And with those fibers runs the middle glenohumeral ligament, which attaches right there. It's intact. So the deep fibers of the subscapularis are injured. The superficial fibers are intact. So at least we've got some of the cuff still present. But what about that large, gaping hole that we saw in the axial projection? What's that about? Let's get some coronals going here. Probably the most favored nation status projection for the rotator cuff, the one that everyone likes. And let's see if we can scroll them together. We've got on the far right a water weighted image, a PD spur in the center of T2 and on the left a T1. Let's start scrolling. We've got our biceps, which is right here under my little magnifying glass. Well, it's still there, but we already know it's malpositioned. We already know it's sublux, so it's not doing its job of helping to keep the humeral head depressed. But what about the supraspinatus? Well, that explains our massive hole, right? There's our hole, and where is the supraspinatus? Oh, it's migrated all the way over here. Here's a piece of it. Here's another floppy piece of it, just kind of lying in that space, attaching to absolutely nothing. If we try and follow this back a little bit, it's bunched up over here at the myotendinous junction. So the subscapularis is just a bloody mess with massive retraction accounting in part for that hole. Now let's go back to the infraspinatus. There's the tip of the infraspinatus. I use the word tip somewhat uh, cavalierly because it's not really a tip. It's a broad-based fan-shaped structure. But this is the free edge of it, and it should be all the way over here. So that's toast. And then we go to the, in, to the, to the teres, 
and we, we still have a teres. So the good news is we have a teres. We have much of the subscapularis intact, the deep fibers injured, but everything else is gone. We've gone through our checklist. Supraspinatus, blown, retracted, complete. Infraspinatus, blown, retracted, and complete from front to back. Subscapularis, deep fibers injured. Biceps, subluxed. Caracal humor ligament, ruptured. Capsule, torn.